Hello everybody, Joe Kane here from Joe Rocks Coronado with another project. Uh, this is how to do, uh, do some wildflowers on a natural stone. So I've got this nice, pretty smooth natural stone. It's, um, it's uh, and I've drawn in with my black Posca paint pen the outlines of some wildflowers that I wanna put on here. And so now I'm gonna fill them in with color and you can see how the process works. Uh, I didn't want to film drawing in all the flowers, but these are pretty simple sketches as you can see. Um, the key is to kind of select um, what types of flowers you want and then draw in the ones in the foreground first. And then what I did was I added in all the stems and the leaves after I drew in the flowers. Um, just so that you can kind of get a layered effect, but you still get the, you know, the important part at the forefront, so to speak. So just going to fill in these um, with the different colors I want. And then you'll see how it works. Um, you don't have to be real careful on these as far as putting the color in. The cool thing about this style of painting, especially using markers and stuff, is you don't have to be real precise, as you can maybe tell when I'm, as you watch me doing this, I don't have very steady hands. <laughs> uh, they tend to shake a lot, so paint markers are actually a little bit easier for me than, than paint brushes, but I do use both sometimes. Um, but you don't have to be real precise with how you fill in these colors because you're going to go back later and use the black liner to outline them again and it's going to look fine. I'm just blending, 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 blending a little bit of the yellow and orange together on my little daisy here. And yeah, so, uh, yeah, someone had asked me, I, I had done a, a similar rock to this a while back, and someone asked me how I, how I get all the detail and how do I make it look so precise. And as you can tell, again, my hands are not real steady. <laughs> they tend to twitch and shake, and, you know, I've got, got nerve issues, different parts of my body. So, anyway, <laughs> um, it can be a little can be a little daunting if I when I'm trying to use a paintbrush but putting the rock here on my workbench and propping my hand up on the edge of the workbench makes it a little bit easier for me and and the overall effect when you're done with this is actually pretty good so I mean it looks uh, it'll look a lot more crisp than you would expect from someone with you know hands like like I've drink you know just got done drinking three cups of espresso or something. I don't even drink coffee, so if I drink caffeine, they're even worse. So, and, and another, just one thing I want to mention about the flowers, you know, how do you select the flowers? I, I really just make up these flowers. I do, these aren't actual, you know, yeah, they're kind of, they kind of look like flowers I've probably seen, you know, that the white one there is some kind of daisy I guess these are the red ones are some sort of maybe rock roses or something like that um, but if you notice I don't even have the same amount of petals on on what would be the same species of flower here I got five on one and six on the other and you know so it, it doesn't matter it's it's an effect I'm going for it's not I'm not looking for botanical accuracy on these things it's more of the artistic effect that I'm going for so, so don't worry about that. Just use your imagination and, you know, create your own species of flowers. Why not? You know, it doesn't have to be uh, anything you saw in nature. Just inspired by nature. That's the beauty of art. You have an uh, artistic license. <laughs> so, but speaking of nature, um, during this coronavirus lockdown, um, I'm recording this in April, late April of... Uh, 2020. So during this coronavirus lockdown, uh, I'm still able to go out and walk in the neighborhood, and also uh, here in here in Coronado, and also down in Imperial Beach. I walk around down there, and you can walk out 
I can walk out to the estuary and it's sort of a nature preserve but they haven't closed it down because there's really almost nobody out there anyway so um, it's and it's really wide open area so there's no no chance that people are really coming into very close contact so anyway um, but what I've been doing is uh, I spent several days over the course of the last couple of months really a, a, probably a dozen days hiking around walking around in the estuary and cataloging photographing documenting whatever you want to call it and learning uh, a lot of the native species that live out there they've done a really good job of eliminating most of the non-native species from the preserve there's still a few um, but uh, I thought why not take this opportunity to learn something about Southern California and the, and the native species and all that so after uh, after the past couple of months and all the rain we've had I've been able to witness over time the flowering of various plant species and been able to learn what those species are and also to learn some of the uses that the Native Americans used to have for them when 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 this was a uh, you know, um, prior to, um, I guess, modern development. So anyway, uh, if it's a great time to do that, we, you know, who knows how long we're going to be in this lockdown. Maybe I'm hearing maybe another month at least, but, um, you can also do it if you don't have access to a nature preserve like that. You can also do that right in your neighborhood. I've done the same thing just walking around in Coronado, which is, there's almost, there's very few native species here, there's not many at all. But every front yard seems to be a pretty well kept garden. I mean, there's beautiful, incredible flowers here, so, and plants and trees. So uh, I've been walking around with my iPhone and I downloaded this app called iNaturalist. Uh, it's, uh, there's a website you can use, iNaturalist.com, or you can get it from, get the app from the app store and put it on your phone. So when you see a plant you don't know, you take a picture of it, upload it, and it'll do a photo match to all the photos in its database. And it's usually pretty good at telling you what that species is. So it'll tell you the scientific name, but also the common name. So you can, you know, depending on how in-depth you want to go. And then also there's usually a link to either the iNaturalist website where you can get more info if you want to get even more in-depth or to Wikipedia where you might find some of those uh, traditional uses. And it's pretty interesting that most of, the, most of the natural plants that grow around here all had either medicinal or nutritional or some other use by the Native Americans. And, and all, a lot of that information is, is available online. It's really amazing. A lot of work has been gone into um, documenting all that info. So it's pretty cool and it also um, when you do that, when you upload your photos, you're also helping out the local naturalist to kind of keep a survey on what species are being seen, which ones are which ones are coming back. You know, we had a long period of drought here, about seven years of drought, and so there were some species that weren't seen for for a while, and now they're coming back with the rain, and it's it's amazing to see not only plants but animals too. Uh, down at this, actually, this morning when I was out walking, I saw here in Coronado a um, southern alligator lizard, which was about eight or nine inches long. Pretty good sized lizard, different than the little fence lizards you normally see around here. And um, I, I didn't know exactly what it was. I knew it was some kind of lizard, but it was sunning itself. And I took a picture and uploaded it to iNaturalist and got back. Uh, a couple of results and then matched visually my picture to to the ones that were being suggested as possible matches and there it was the southern alligator lizard so pretty cool and um, so that's what you can do with plants animals whatever and then it helps out the naturalists who who try to track the biodiversity of these various species here and uh, and in the meantime you get to learn a lot about the environment around you and that the natural world in general in the area where you live so i highly recommend that um, but if nothing else be observant of 
the plants and the flowers that you see and then you can bring those ideas back with you to your art to your rock painting and then you don't have to wait for the blooms to come you can just preserve them in beautiful bold acrylics <laughs> so anyway back to what i'm doing here so if you look at this you can see i'm using different colors of different shades of green different hues because uh, when you use different colors it's going to give it more depth it's going to give it a, a more natural look not everything is going to be one flat green and since i'm using paint markers i can't really uh, blend shades of green in my palette so i'm just using these different colors to in different areas of the of the leaves and the stems so that the overall effect when i get done with this will be that there's a lot of it'll it appear as if there's a lot of different colors even though actually i'm i'm only using i think three different colors of green here but um but the overall visual effect will be that there's you know a lot of diversity of colors in there so so yeah just change it up and they don't have to make sense again you're not trying to make these lifelike you know, this is the style, the style I'm using. It's more of like, uh, maybe like a, um, I don't know what style it's called. <laughs> uh, I think of it as like a pen and ink style or maybe a comic book style. I don't know. Line drawing with color. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, someday I'll take an art class. But, um, but the cool thing about it is you can, you can be pretty quick and not worry about being too neat and then at the end when you outline it all again with the bold black then it turns out looking as if you've done a really precise crisp job on on this thing and um and it's it's kind of an illusion really because i'm certainly not being all that careful or all that neat as i'm throwing in the colors here so don't worry about that just uh just have fun with it put in the different colors put in your you know i'm just throwing in some little highlights here on different parts of the green again just not to be realistic just to give it a little bit of texture and layers um, so that it appears as if there's a whole lot of detail going on with light and shadow and all that when really it's just a couple of different colors and this is a great effect to use on the natural stone too because the natural stone actually in my mind it lends to the overall effect of this being a a group of flowers that is just maybe outgrowing in sandy areas you know and the color of the rock kind of matches that when i prepared this rock i will say this um when i when i get rocks from the beach it's salt water out there so i do uh, if I know I'm going to be using acrylic paint on them, then I want you you want to um, rinse off the rock pretty thoroughly because I've I've noticed in the past when I've used rocks from the beach, if you don't get that residue of salt off of there that they've kind of accumulated over the time, um, it can affect how the paint stays on the rock and the color of it and all that. So I like to take these natural stones and wash them really just rinse them off with fresh water you know and also sometimes I'll just leave them out for a while and they'll sit in the get rained on you know I have a pile of them out in my backyard now um, where they can get rained on so check this out um, I'm gonna start now with my liner and I'm gonna start outlining all these colors that I put on Starting with my dominant flower here, it doesn't matter as long as you don't smudge it too much while you're gone. But yeah, it, preparing your stone in advance helps. And actually, on this one, it, it's a granite stone, so it's it's rough, but it's not terribly rough. It's not like sand sandstone. Um, but it was a little bit rougher than I wanted for the drawing I was going to do, and so I actually sprayed it with a clear matte. Um, coat of uh what do you call that stuff mod podge um just to give it a, a little bit of a smoother texture and to kind of just seal the rock a little bit before i started i don't always do that um, i usually don't do that but in this case i knew i was gonna be using these fine point markers 
and it, it just they just glide over the surface better if they have a little bit of a coating on there so it's up to you depending on what rock you get just pay attention to which rocks you're going to use when you're when you're out gathering rocks for this type of work so yep just gonna put in all these lines and you can see I'm working pretty quickly Again, you don't have to be terribly careful um, especially now all the hard work's done so to speak the uh, the colors all on there now I'm just put throwing in the outlines and some details in all these areas and and also adding in some little extra texture marks you know veins in the leaves and, and stuff like that and that will help too with just the overall effect that there's a lot of detail going on in here sometimes when I finish one of these types of rocks uh, drawings paintings whatever you call it I'll look back at it and think wow how did I how did I put in all that detail well that's the effect you want you want it to look like it's complicated when it's actually pretty simple it's not hard to do any of this stuff it just takes a little bit of time and patience and honestly you don't even have to know much to do it um, again these leaves are not accurate they're not anatomically accurate or if they are I'd be surprised <laughs> these are more like just suggestions of some kind of greenery underneath a plant you know a stem and then I don't know this lily or whatever it is I think it's an amaryllis type plant that I was envisioning when I started drawing it I've seen some of these amaryllis plants South American amaryllis um, in the neighborhood here and they're just gorgeous and they're, they're they got these big beautiful flowers on them so maybe that's what I was thinking when I drew that thing out or some kind of a iris or lily or something I don't know but it's up to you I mean you can this is where your imagination can go wild you can create all kinds of alien looking flowers believe it or not sometimes I'm out walking around in nature and you'll I'll see a flower and I'll think wow this actually does look like it's from an alien planet when you look at these things up close sometimes it's amazing how much beautiful detail there is and just the variety of shape and color and the subtleties of all the different textures that are there and the pollen and how it all works and it's it's really fantastic um, really enjoy doing that just spending some time out in nature getting ideas for what I'm going to paint done here just finishing up these last ones and then I'm gonna throw in probably a, a few more details as I go here just kind of systematically working across this rock Okay, so, and that's what you want to do. Be be methodical about it, so you don't miss anything. And you just throw in all your lines there. And then when you end up, when you finish this, when you know when when you get your drawing finished and you've done all the outlining. Then you can go back again. Usually what I'll do is I'll just look around and see where I can balance it out a little bit by either adding more detail or a little more color or some accents or whatever. As I'm looking at this, um, I didn't put any blue or strong purples in here and I kind of want to have that. So as I'm thinking about it, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna just nothing, nothing too big, nothing crazy. I'm not going to make any uh, life-changing decisions here, but uh, I'm definitely going to throw in some little blue highlights here somewhere. 
and maybe a little pink to uh, tie together this side of the rock. Hmm. Don't worry about it. I'm not. I promise I won't kill it. I won't destroy it. <laughs> Sometimes you can you can go too far, but that's okay because uh, the good thing about painting is you can always change it or cover it up or go over it or it's a rock so you could just paint a complete coat of paint over it and start over and it's acrylic so you could scrub out scrub it off if you wanted to I would usually just paint over it if I really hated it just getting all these leaves in here see these leaves these are not rock rose leaves and these little guys I don't know what they are they kind of look like a lissom or something like that you see the little tiny white flowers that you see growing along garden borders and stuff like that but but these stems I, I don't know that doesn't look like a lissom and I'm just throwing in some little bare branches here just to give it a little more detail in the undergrowth here fill in some of that negative space just so it looks like there is a lot of little grasses maybe growing down at the base of these in the background, in between the leaves, and it just kind of helps it to be, helps it to look a little more, it's a more visual interest, I guess. But you do what you want to do. This is your garden. You grow it the way you want. That's the beauty of it. You can do whatever you want on these things. I may do a series of these because I'm kind of enjoying doing them. I want to explore some other types of flowers, maybe in different patterns. And I do have a good collection of this type of rock that's pretty smooth and kind of a light, nice, natural color. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do this on a dark rock because when you spray a dark rock and you have black on it, like these black liner, it's going to get lost in the in the background, so to speak. Because this will this will get a lot darker when I put the spray sealer on the rock at the end. Now, because I sprayed this rock initially, it won't change as much as it might if I was just doing this on bare rock. So that's another reason that you might want to coat your rock first because it'll give you a better visual impression of what you have, what you're working with. Okay, just a little more detail on some of these petals. And yeah, I'd love to put a little... highlights in here got to make my amaryllis amaryllis glow a little bit also gives it a little more depth that way at least I think it does yeah and then maybe just some little pollen highlights in these rock roses I guess that would be pollen I don't know it's an alien flower for so it'll be whatever it's, whatever I want it to be I guess Maybe a few more highlights. This thing's almost done. It's looking, I'm pretty happy with it so far. But I do want to put in, remember I mentioned the blue, so let's try some of this blue. And I'm just going to, I don't want a lot. I want to keep this pretty subtle. I'm going to put it just in the middle of some of these white flowers. little bit of blue on all these little guys so now I, I don't know I don't think I normally see blue alyssum but uh, maybe that's a maybe on alien worlds that's what you get and then down in here maybe there's some little some little blue 
some things growing down in the bottom. Maybe it's some kind of sage salvia. There's some blue salvia I see sometimes. Who knows? But the blue kind of gives it another visual depth that it wouldn't have if, if those little details weren't in there. So we're coming to the end of this. You know, you take the time and do it however you want. And, you know, post a picture in my Facebook page. If you want to see me on Facebook, go to Joe Rocks Coronado. Just search for that term, Joe Rocks Coronado. You'll find it. Same thing on Instagram, Joe Rocks Coronado. And you can see all my rocks. I've painted easily over a thousand rocks. I don't, I don't know the exact number right now. I was keeping track for a while, but it's a lot in some yellow here but I'm coming to the end here I think this is uh, looking pretty good and yeah well, it almost makes it look like there's little bits of pollen in there maybe maybe I need some orange in there give it that shadow light and shadow look there we go great so, but you do it however you want, and then, uh, yeah, post, send me a send me a photo or post a post a photo on uh, on my Facebook page. I'd love to see them. And if you have uh, in your town, wherever you live, if you have a rock group, share them on there and let people know what you're up to. It's always good to share the art, share the beauty. And share your love for nature. It's awesome. Let's see. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to try to add in a photo here at the end. Uh, I'll put, I'll put, once I'm going to seal this thing. You don't need to watch all that. That's boring. But I'm going to put some sealer on it, let it dry, and then I'll post, uh, I'll post a photo of it at the end of this. So you can see it, but that's that's kind of what we're kind of what we're looking at there. Beautiful wildflowers. Thanks for watching. Appreciate uh, appreciate it. Take care and paint rocks.